Okay, folks, Jason here again to walk you through yet another aspect of Photoshop. And in these videos, I'm going to talk about color adjustment. And I use the word or the phrase color adjustment because a lot of people will use like color correction. And color correction implies that we're going in and we're really working with the numbers to get the exact color and the exact numbers of the color that make up the color to go in and match something. Now, I will do a video on color matching, <clears throat> but what I want to do here is I just want to do color adjustment. And what I mean by color adjustment is pleasing color. And pleasing color is, does it look good? Is it nicely saturated? Is there good contrast? Does it look like you would expect it to look in the real world? So what I'm going to do is start off with some very basic concepts of what we want to start our color adjustments as. So if we go under the image menu and go under adjustments, you see we've got a whole long list of different adjustments that we can apply to an image. Brightness and contrast, levels, curves, exposure. And you'll notice how they're broken up into different sections here. So we go through their basic section here, brightness and contrast, which is something that is a very fundamental basic way of going in and adjusting an image. So image, adjustment, brightness, and contrast. Calls up a panel, and I can go and I can slide my brightness slider to the left and right, and my contrast slider to the left and right, and as I do this, it changes the image. Now, how do I know what I'm doing with this as I slide them back and forth? Well, you know what? You really don't. You're just looking at it and saying, okay, I think it looks good. Because the one problem with these extremely simple dialog boxes is that it doesn't give you any feedback. I don't know what this really is supposed to look like, and I really don't know what the image is telling me. Now, even though brightness and contrast is something that we always pay attention to with images because we want to make sure there's enough contrast between the lights and the dark so the image doesn't look flat, we also want to make sure that there's enough brightness so it doesn't look too dark or it doesn't look too bright. So sliding these sliders back and forth doesn't really give me any type of input or feedback because I don't know what's going on. But there's an auto button and I click on the auto button and I wait and I'm hoping that automatic, that this auto button is going to do something and it did. <clears throat> okay, what did it do? Well, based on what's in the image, it went ahead and it automatically adjusted it, okay? Well, I have an issue with that because I need to know what's going on. I don't want to just click an auto button and be like, mm, okay, that's the way it is. If that were the case, we would just take our camera and just shoot everything and have it, you know, the automatic settings, just shoot it and turn out the best photographs ever, which we know isn't true. We have to do a lot of other settings and adjustment. So while brightness and contrast is really important, we're not going to use just the simple brightness and contrast settings here. We're going to go and we're going to use levels and then curves to get our brightness and contrast. Now, under the image menu, we've got all these adjustments that we can do to our image. The problem is, is that all of these adjustments right here are destructive. They're going to be done directly on my image, which means if I save and close this file, I have no recourse unless I save this as a secondary file so I can go back in and change anything that I maybe have overdone or underdone the last time. So I'm going to avoid doing it destructively on my image, and I'm going to go to my Layers panel, and I'm going to access the adjustment layers here. Instead of doing it directly on the image, we are going to do a layer, and then we're going to be able to adjust these things via a layer. And with layers, they're going to go above our image, and we are able to go and turn those on, turn those off, further adjust, and adjust the opacity or the intensity at which these adjust. Now, the other way that you can call up these adjustment layers is going to the bottom of your layers panel, clicking on the half moon, and we will have the same adjustment layers here. Now, we've already talked about brightness and contrast. I use brightness and contrast. I just don't use the brightness and contrast settings because we're going to jump to levels and we're going to do brightness and contrast in a much more controlled way, one that we can get feedback from the image 
and adjust it based on this image. So either under your half moon you can choose levels or you can go under your layer menu and you can go to your adjustment layer and choose levels here either way. That is going to put an adjustment layer above your image that you had selected. It's going to call up your properties panel and in the properties panel it's going to show us the information or the story of what's going on in this image. Now this is what's called a histogram. And this histogram is telling us the story or the amount of information in this image and where it falls. To understand the story of what's going on, we need to understand the characters. This is our shadow slider right here. This is our darkest point. This is our highlight slider. This is the lightest point. And our mid-tone slider here. So white, black, and then gray. When we're talking about contrast, contrast very simply means more difference between the darkest areas and the lighter areas. So how do we get contrast out of something like this? You take your highlight slider and you slide it in. You're making the lights lighter. You take your shadow slider and you slide that in, making the darks darker. And the more you slide those together, the more contrast you're going to get. Now, how do we know where the right amount of contrast is based on the image? Well, funny you should ask. It's actually pretty easy. Because based on the story, or the histogram, that this image is showing us, my information starts right here at this peak. Now I can tell this is a professionally shot image, and the reason why is because my information, this histogram, the story that it's telling me, doesn't go to the very end. If this mountain of information went to the very end, that would mean that the exposure wasn't set correctly or the image wasn't shot correctly. But a, a well-photographed image is going to have room at the ends here, on both ends, the shadow and the highlight ends, that's going to go ahead and include the information without going to the ends and cutting it off. So if I want to make this brighter, I can take my highlight slider and slide it in to where the information begins to build. And I'm basically saying, okay, this is my lightest point right here. My shadow slider, I'm going to come in and I'm going to slide it in and I'm going to slide it where the information begins to build. Okay? I got a little bit of information, but you can see right where the information begins to build. Now what I've done here is, based on this image, I've gone in, based on what the story is telling me, I've gone in and set my contrast. And now I can see that this is very much different. I see a lot more contrast, a lot more divergence between the highlights and the shadows, and I did it not randomly, just by sliding the brightness of the contrast slider back and forth. I did it by paying attention to my histogram. Every image is different. Every image tells a different story. Even if you've shot 30 images of the same thing over a period of two minutes, you're going to get slightly different information in here because every photograph contains slightly different information. So you can see if I turn that off, this was my original image without the contrast, go back and poke the visibility eyeball and it turns back on. Great, that's how you do contrast based on the information that the image is giving you. Now if you'd like to adjust the brightness overall, you take your mid-tone slider and you can slide it one direction or the other. And it may seem like this is counterintuitive where you're sliding this toward the highlight slider but it gets darker. And that's not really the most linear way of thinking. As you slide this, this mid-tone slider, it's called a mid-tone slider because it fits in between the middle of your shadow and your highlight. So the mid-tone slider says everything from this point over to the highlight is going to be lighter. Everything from this point to the shadow is now going to be darker. If you slide this toward the highlight, what you're doing is you're saying, I want more information to fall at the midpoint to the darker point, hence darkening the entire image. If you slide this toward the shadow slider, what you're actually doing is you're actually increasing the range between the midpoint and the highlight, including more information that's going to be at the midpoint and brighter. So there's no real magic to where this falls on the ramp right here. You know, I don't pro probably don't want it this dark simply because it starts to lose some detail here. And I probably don't want it this light because I start to also lose some detail. In this case, it starts to blow it out. And if I make it too dark, it starts to saturate or fill in. So I can slide that back and forth and find the point where it's going to be 
nicely represented. And this is great. I can close out of my properties panel. Now, one of the advantages of going in and doing this with an adjustment layer is I can turn that adjustment layer visibility on and off and I can see exactly the outcome of my adjustment. To get back in and adjust that, go back into the layers panel and double click on the adjustment layer icon here. And each adjustment layer is going to have a slightly different icon. This one looks like a little bacteria growing in a Petri dish here. And it calls up my existing adjustment. Now this is great because if I close this file and come back to it two weeks later, and I'd like to see how I adjusted this, I have this information. Another advantage of doing a layer adjustment is I may have adjusted this slightly too much and I just want to knock this back. I just don't want quite as much contrast. So instead of going back in and double clicking on the adjustment layer thumbnail and trying to tweak the highlights and the shadows to get where I'm going, I'm simply going to go to this adjustment layer and I'm going to knock back the opacity. And knocking back the opacity of this adjustment layer to say 80% simply says, you know what, I just want to cut down this overall. I don't want to specifically adjust the highlights or the shadows or both or the saturation, all that. I just want to knock it down. That is the advantage. So I may have adjusted this slightly too much and I can simply adjust the opacity, which then will adjust the intensity in which the levels then adjusts the image. So super simple way to do brightness and contrast. Now, we're going to take this the next step further. I want to go in and I would like to get a little bit more complicated image. So here I do want to do a levels adjustment layer. Layers panel, go to my half moon and choose levels. So again, this is a professionally shot image and I'm going to use my histogram to slide the highlight slider in to where the information begins and to where the shadow begins just to get a little bit more contrast. And I see that didn't do a whole lot of contrast and I'd like a little bit more. Not a problem. The next step is to go in and to do this with each and every individual channel here. I'm going to reset this back to my original by going in and clicking the little reset button here which is that little arrow that goes to the left. So this is my what we call as shot. Okay, This is the information. I'm going to go in with each and every channel. So if I target my red channel and my green channel and my blue channel, instead of my composite, my composite is the red, green, and blue channels all together. Doing the adjustment this way on the composite channel is fine, but we don't have as much adjustment because we're trying to do the image overall. If you want more control, we can do what's called per channel contrast. Per channel contrast is going in with the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel and adjusting it per channel. Well, now we have three options, red, green, and blue, as opposed to my composite overall. So in the red channel, I'm going to come in and I'm going to do my basic contrast settings on my red channel. Now I'm going to jump to my green channel and I'm going to do the same thing as well. There we go. And I'm going to do my blue channel as well. Blue looks like we're right there at that point, and I'm going to come in right there. Now, doing my per channel contrast is going to allow me to get a slightly better result. Why? Because I'm doing a finer adjustment and I have more control over each and every one. And while this wasn't a huge difference, there is a noticeable difference in that contrast. So that works out really good. Now, overall, I'm not going to worry about the brightness on each individual level. I'm probably going to come back on the composite here and maybe control the brightness overall. If I control the brightness on each individual channel here, it's then going to go ahead and skew it one way or another with the color. So this allowed me to go in and do per channel contrast and get slightly better results. Okay. Now, of course, each and every one of the images that you do this on is going to give you a very different result. So this one was professionally shot and it was fairly well exposed. So I was able to go in and get a really good result. I'm going to switch over to this glacier and I'm going to show you how per channel contrast is going to work with this. So if I go in to my curves and I want to adjust this, sorry, I don't want to do curves. I want to do levels. I'm going to do this. And this particular one, I'm going in and I'm going to do levels here as we go through. 
Now, this one was already converted a while back for print purposes. So it is separated into four different channels, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And the same principle that I'm using here works for an RGB channel as well. Typically, we don't convert images to CMYK because it gives us a shorter range of color. But this was given to me, and so I see this image, and I don't like the contrast of this overall. So what I'm going to do with my curves adjustment layer is I'm going to do my per channel contrast. So I'm going to jump into the cyan layer, and I'm going to kind of pump that up to the end of each and every one of these. And I'm going to bring the magenta in here. Don't worry about it, folks. We haven't adjusted it because all of a sudden it's like, wow, that looks really red. I'm going to go into my yellow, and I'm going to bring that way over here. Okay. And I'm going to take my black, and that's pretty much at the end of where it is. I'm going to go back to my composite overall. Okay. So now let's zoom out. And there is the difference between my images. And it's like, wow, that's pretty amazing. So if I go in and I look at my channels here and I see my per channel contrast, this allowed me to get more information from this image than I would normally get just by using my composite overall. So it's kind of a nice way of being able to adjust this content. Here, I'm probably going to really ramp up the black here to get more saturation or contrast out of this. There we go. And I can go back to my overall adjustment here, and then I can use my mid-tone slider to adjust the brightness overall. But take a look. Very flat image, <clears throat> lots of contrast. Okay. Now, this is probably more of what it looks like right here. So different results for different images. So let's go back to the diner sign here. And we've gone in and we've done our levels here, which look really good. And I'm fairly satisfied with that. Now, what happens if we'd like to now go in and we'd like to target a specific color? So maybe this guy is a bit blue and I would like to warm it up. If I go in and I target my red channel here, I can warm it up. And the way I can add red to this image is just think of this as a dimmer switch, okay? So if you walk into a room and you want more light, you're going to turn on the light switch to get more light. So I'm going to go, if I'm in my red channel and I want more red, then just like a normal light switch, when I turn on the light switch, I'm going to light up the room with red. So in order to turn it on, you would think bright, okay? So I'm going to take my highlight slider on my red channel, and if I slide my highlight in, I'm going to get more red. Now if I'd like less red, and I'm on the red channel, I'd like to take red out, I'm going to go to my shadow slider, because just like walking out of the room, when you want less light, you turn the light off to make it dark. So I'm on my red channel, and I take red out. Now when I take red out, what am I actually doing? Well, I'm taking red out, and then the green and the blue are showing up more, because I'm taking out the red. Okay? It isn't just done in a vacuum where the red goes down and nothing else changes. So if I'd like to add more of my selected channel color, I go to my highlight. If I'd like to take out that selected channel color, I go to my shadow. If I go to my green, same thing is true. I can green it up by using my highlight slider. If I take green out, I am now going to get more red and more blue. And then if I go to blue, I can add more blue. And if I take blue out, I'm going to go in and take out more red and green, which an easy way to understand this. If you want more yellow, you take out blue. Okay, so this allows me to go in and adjust this if I want kind of like a, a little bit of a dirtier or kind of more foreboding look. I can take out the blue, which gives me more red and green, which gives me yellow. And I can adjust this individually by channel to go ahead and adjust the colors overall. Okay, so I'm no longer paying attention to the contrast anymore because I had those set. Now I can adjust the colors here. If I take this with my mid-tone slider, this allows me to go ahead and cheat one way or the other without adjusting the contrast. Okay? A lot of different ways to go through and adjust these things. And again, I can turn that on, turn that off in my layers panel, and I can see the amount of adjustment that's been done. So it's quite cool. I'm going to turn off the levels adjustment layer and close out of my properties panel. And levels works just fine. It's a Simple, straightforward way to get contrast, adjust your brightness, do your per channel contrast, and also go in and on a top level, target your layers with the color 
target your channels with a color, and then you can add more red, green, or blue, or take it out. Next, I'm going to jump to my Curves Adjustment layer. And a Curves Adjustment layer here is a little bit more in-depth. Now, I did turn off my Levels Adjustment layer here because if that were on, this Curves Adjustment layer would then compound any adjustments with my Levels, and they would all adjust this image right here. So, I turned that Levels Adjustment layer off because I didn't want that, so I'll just throw it away. Okay. The Curves Adjustment layer is a little bit more um, involved, but it still works on the same principle as Levels. Here we have our shadow at our highlight slider, but you notice what's missing. There is no mid-tone slider. Not a problem. So here I can adjust my image contrast overall by using my highlights and shadows as well. And I can go into each individual channel and I can adjust the per channel contrast. Now one interesting tidbit here is that you can actually see the channels in color. So if you don't read green, you can see green visually here. I don't know that that makes any difference, but you know what? Sometimes these little nuggets are just fine to deal with. Okay, so I can adjust the image overall in the per channel contrast, and that gives me some decent contrast. Now what I'd like to do is control the brightness. So in my grid structure here in the curves, I have this done in quarters. And you may have heard the saying quarter tones, half tones, three quarter tones. And this is something that uh, people may mention. You probably don't hear it much anymore. Quarter tones are your darker areas. Mid-tones are right in the middle. Three-quarter tones are your lighter areas. So one distinct advantage of using curves is being able to get more contrast out of the image without going in and without adjusting the darkest point or the lightest point any further. Now, if I want to do my brightness, I'm just going to click on the middle of my ramp and land a point and go up to make it brighter. How do I know that? Because on the left-hand side, I've got this ramp. Up is going to make it lighter. Down is going to make it darker. Okay? So that's what I get. There's my brightness. If I put a point on the ramp that I no longer like, grab that point, snap it off, and the point disappears. So that's my brightness control. Now, if I would like further contrast out of this image without making my darks darker or my lights lighter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to target the darker areas, not the darkest, because that's as dark as I want to go. Remember, any darker is going to start to fill in and saturate and lose detail. Any lighter is going to blow out and lose detail. So I don't want to move those ends. I want those to stay. So curves allowed me to go in and adjust the curve. Now, you'll notice when I go in and create a whole lot more contrast here, I get a much steeper ramp. Steeper ramp, more divergence between the shadow and the highlights. A flatter the ramp, the flatter the image. Now, unique to curves, I could flatten this image so much where I could take my shadows here and I could actually, instead of making the shadows darker, I can make the shadows lighter. And then if I take my highlights, I can always make them lighter, but if I go and drag down, I can make my highlights darker. And guess what happens, folks? When you make a flat ramp, you get a flat image. And your image is now completely flat. Lack of contrast. There is no difference between the shadow and the highlights. Okay? It's flatlined. It's dead. Okay? Flat ramp, flat image. Steep ramp, lots of contrast. I'm going to return those back to their perspective corners to get my highlights and shadows where I want them to be. Now, I would like more contrast out of this image. So I'm going to go to my three-quarter tones and I'm going to make my darker areas darker. Not the darkest. This is not moving. But then I want more contrast, so I'm going to go to my three-quarter tones and I'm going to make my lighter areas lighter, never touching the lightest. Now you'll notice the curves ramp gets steeper. Steeper the curves, the more the contrast. The flatter the curve, the less contrast. So I can actually go in and I can get more contrast out of an image without saturating the shadows and without blowing out the highlights. This is a cool feature of the curves adjustment layer, something I can't do with levels. Levels are great, they work really good for what they are, but curves takes it to the next step. Okay, 
now I'm going to drop down to my red channel and I would like to go, actually I'm going to go to my blue channel here and I would like to adjust the sky. So where on the curves adjustment layer do I adjust the predominance of blue on the sky? Well, if I pay attention to my adjustment ramp right here, I could tell that the peak amount of blue is right here. But is that really where it's going to be in the sky? So curves offer yet another nice advantage. And this is the little finger scrubby, or what I call the finger shake weight, because it definitely looks like little finger shake weight. And if I take my little finger scrubby, and instead of going up and down on my curves here, I'm going to take my finger scrubby, and hover over my image, which automatically turns into the eyedropper. You don't have to do anything. Click on your image, and you'll notice it turns into a little finger scrubby or a little shake weight. And then it also lands a point on my curves ramp. When I drag up, it is going to put more blue in. When I drag down, it's going to take out the blue, leaving more green and red. And I can drag up or down, and a little goes a long way with this. Okay, I can drag down or go up and adjust each individual channel this way. So if I go into the greens here, I can go and I can take the greens out or I can add greens there. And I can click in different places on here to adjust overall. Now it is adjusting the overall image, but you'll notice when we go in and we adjust something here, the curves ramp stays at the ends. And so we get a predominance of adjustment in the middle of the curve, tailing out to no adjustment. So it's really awesome. Okay, so this is a way that you can go and create some really cool adjustments and get more out of your image by using curves and targeting each individual channel and then further going in with your little finger scrubby to then click on a location and be able to adjust that overall. Okay, pretty awesome. That's what I love about curves. More involved, but you can definitely get more out of that adjustment. And then we can see how I can substantially change the image, which that curves adjustment layer. And remember, if you like what you've done, but you may have gone too far, you can always go back and adjust that opacity down to get less adjustment from that adjustment layer. Pretty cool. Now I want to show you something that I want to go even further with. I mean, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do a levels adjustment layer. With a levels adjustment layer, I come in and I can either do my contrast on the composite or I can go in and do my per channel contrast here on each and every individual channel. Now what happens if I'm not completely satisfied with my contrast and I would like more contrast to come out of this? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to push this further and this is what's called clipping. And if you go under the drop down menu here, we can choose the show clipping for black and white points, but I'm going to use a shortcut for this. And what I'm going to do here is pretty cool. Okay. If I want more contrast out of my image overall, I'm going to go to my highlight slider, I'm going to hold down my option or alt key, and I'm going to option or alt click. Everything is going to go black. And what I'm doing is I'm showing what's called clipping. And clipping means anything that is going to be outside that range is going to be lost. And so the clipping basically is cutting off information. Well, what information is it cutting off? Well, with my Option or Alt key held down, and I start to see those colors, as I slide my highlight slider in, you'll see more and more of the image appearing. And as more of the image appears, all of a sudden it becomes white, and then it starts to disappear. So what is this telling me? Well, I know with my highlight slider, as I slide it in, I'm going to blow out the highlights. But holding down the Option key and seeing what the layer clipping is, when I start to see these colors, these are the colors that are on the verge of being blown out, okay? Like being made too light. So I know that green is made up of yellow and blue. And as I start to slide this, you'll notice that certain portions start to become lighter and those colors disappear. As those colors disappear, I'm basically chopping those off or excluding them from the image, clipping them, okay? Once it becomes white, that means I have no other color, and with no color, I have no detail. So as I keep going, you'll notice the sign goes from green to cyan, and then the last color to disappear is cyan. Once that disappears, there's nothing left. So why would I use something like this? Well, using something like this, I can now judge my overall image based on how much detail I can get by with blowing out or losing 
because of my highlights. And maybe I don't care that there's anything inside the type of the main portion of the sign, but I do want to retain the greenness of the sign. I can basically clip it to that point of the image. Now going to the shadow slider holding down my option or alt key, I click on the shadow slider and it turns white. Now you'll notice there are some colors and those colors are the colors that are being saturated. Okay, so as I slide this in, there's more colors that are being saturated. So the yellow of the sign and the cyan starts to saturate. Once those areas turn black, that means it is completely saturated and I can no longer see the detail. So at what point do I care about saturated detail? Well, the bottom of the sign really doesn't have much detail that I'm concerned with, nor do the little bits of leaves up at the top. So I can keep going, but once I start filling everything in with black, of course, when this is all black, you have no differentiation between the highlights and the shadows. So this may be too far, but I can start to saturate those colors. And once it turns black again, I have no more discernible detail. So what this has allowed me to do is this has allowed me to get a lot more contrast out of this than I would normally get. Okay by just going in and doing my contrast. But I did it based on what the image was telling me. So now I get substantially more contrast, okay? Which is cool. And I can do the same thing with a curves adjustment layer as well. If I go into curves adjustment and I hold down my option or alt key, I get the exact same thing. So now I can adjust each and every one of these to adjust those where I want to get more contrast. And if I were to go in, and I were to do this on each individual channel, I could see that, okay? Once I get to the red, it's completely saturated, okay? And then it's going to completely disappear. You see that? It's like, okay, so I'm on my highlights here. So I do that and I'm gonna get a lot more red out of that because I'm on my red channel. Of course, I go to my shadow slider. I do the same thing. Now it's gonna be completely saturated. So I can get more contrast out of these channels here per channel contrast by doing each individual channel here, and this is going to give me a very highly contrasted image right there, hugely so. So if you want that kind of grunge effect of oversaturated channels, you can certainly get that. And then of course, go back into your opacity of your adjustment layer, and you can dial that overall impact back. But keep in mind that we're doing this overall to our entire image. We did it to the composite, and then we were able to go in and target each individual channel, which is kind of interesting. But still, there are some things that I would like to do with this image even further. So I've gone in and I've really targeted that. I'm gonna cut the adjustment layer down to 50% because I like the look, but I think it's a little bit blown out. Now I'm gonna take this even further. I've done my levels, I've done my curves, but I would like to now go in and target specific areas. So I need to get a little bit more contrast and color out of this sign. So using my polygon lasso tool, I'm going to put a selection around each and every individual section. And as I do this, I can go in and target that section with that selection active. I'm then going to do a curves adjustment layer. And when I do a curves or any type of adjustment layer with a selection active, it will give me a mask. Now it gives me a mask every time, but because I have nothing selected, it just gives me a mask of white. And you know, black conceals, white reveals. And here with my selection active and then creating an adjustment layer, it automatically gives me a mask. Black is concealing where I don't want it to adjust. White is letting it show through that selection that I had. Now, based on this selection, I can come in and I can adjust just that portion overall, and I could then do per channel contrast, but I could also target each and every individual channel to get this adjustment as we go. So this can work out very well, and I can do selections all around each and every individual item. So that works out good. So let's jump over to this one here, and I'm gonna show you with pre-done selections how we would go through and adjust an image. I have already gone in and I've created selections around each and every one of these areas. And I've done a video on this on how to get hard and soft edge selections here. And I've done this by selecting the sky and then the water and softening the selections and that whole video. I would like to target just the sky. 
So with my channels here, I'm going to go in, I'm going to hold down my command key, command click on the thumbnail for the sky to load that selection. Going back to my layers panel, I'm going to do a curves adjustment layer. Now, when I have a selection active, my histogram will only show me what's inside the selection. It doesn't care about the rest of the image. I'm not adjusting the rest of the image. And I'm just going to do a very quick contrast here based on my histogram. No, nothing else. I'm going to go back to my channel here, and I'm going to command click on the water channel to load the water. Now I'm going to go and create a new curves adjustment layer on the water, and I'm going to very quickly go in and adjust the contrast of the water. Back to my channels again. Command click on the sand adjustment layer. Back to the layers. New layer adjustment of the curves. And I'm going to adjust this. This is a little bit tricky too because it's like how far do you go on the sand? Clearly you don't go here. I'm going to go over here where I start to build my information. Back to my channels for my last selection that I saved. And there's nothing special about saving these selections other than they're already there. So go to my layers and I'm going to create a new adjustment layer of curves to adjust the woman and there's not much I need to do here, which is great. There it is. Okay. Now you'll notice I didn't do a very good selection around this woman here, but there's tricks to this too. So I can go in and I can turn off all of my layers by doing the poke and swipe and there's my adjustment beforehand. Another cool way of turning off all your other layers is go to the layer that you want to see, hold down your Option or Alt key, and Option or Alt poke that in the eye. It's going to turn off all your other layers. Okay. Now, let's zoom in on the woman here. And you'll notice I didn't do a very good selection here on and saving that with my curves adjustment layer here. And it affects other things here as well. The cool part with a mask is if I go into my mask and I double click, I've set this up to open my properties panel. You may get a dialog box saying, do you want to open your properties panel or do you want to open your select and mask? If your select and mask opens up, just cancel out of that and go into your window menu and call up your properties panel to adjust the mask. Because this mask wasn't very well done and I didn't have a hard edge here, I can go back in with my mask that I have and I can actually feather that mask or soften the edge of that mask non-destructively on my adjustment layer just by feathering that, okay? Pretty cool. So if the selection wasn't perfect, I can further adjust that selection because selection just turned into a mask and I can adjust that, which is pretty darn cool. So here was a really quick way of going in and targeting different sections here, starting with this image, it looks pretty good, and now doing that, being able to adjust each one of these separately. And now I have an image that has been specifically adjusted to each and every individual section here. And if I would like to go in and target not just my composite, I could then further go in and target each and every individual channel to get the adjustment that I'm looking for. This was a professionally shot image, so the exposure was pretty good, so I didn't need to go very far with my adjustments. But this is what you can do with levels and curves adjustment layers to go in and adjust your image. From the simple to the more specific, or more complex, you can do a lot of great stuff. And you don't have to do all curves or all levels. You can use whatever layer adjustments that you want in here to get the best results. And there's just the start of the overview on just basic brightness and contrast using levels and curves.